afternoon. I'm just standing outside the greenhouse because it's really, really hot inside. The sun has been shining. It is a glorious day, although it's going behind clouds every once in a while, but it's lovely. So I'm going to be in the greenhouse today. I'm going to pot up some of these. Let me show you. Um, I have got some red chilli pepper plants. There's one pot, two pots and three pots. I might have to give some away as some gifts because I've got too many. I'm going to pot them into this pot. Um, I did all the tomatoes the other day. Um, I usually only put one, sorry, two tomato plants in each pot. But this time I did, well, this one's got three, but one of them's only a little tiny baby. And um, this one I've got four in and they're growing really well. So I'm going to have to maybe transfer them into more pots. We're going to have lots of tomatoes this year. Um, so I need to go give them a feed. Um, and once I've given them a feed, I'll plant up the red chilli peppers um, and the cucumbers. Let me show you them. They are here. They're coming on really well. And this one was so small and it's growing really, really well. So there's three in there. Um, I've also planted some, you see there's some strawberries, um, some strawberry seeds from my baraberry strawberries that I put in the freezer, but they haven't come. But I'm still going to keep watering them. And you never know, there might be a little sign of life in a little bit longer. I've just got to be patient. I'm not very good at being patient. Um, I've also potted up some sweet peas. <laughs> a bit of, bit of a fail on this. Um, I divided them all out in the colours, made sure that the colour had white ones in one set and coloured ones in another. And I took one coloured and put it into here. And I don't know which one it is. So it's going to be a nice surprise when beautiful, colourful flowers come out when they're supposed to be white. But what I've done is I have sown some gypsophila seeds around here and I've kept them in the greenhouse till they germinate. I need to water um, water these and I need to pinch off some of the dead leaves because I, I left them a bit long before I actually potted them into, into pots. So I need to use my little little tool to pinch off those little leaves. Um, so And I also need to find a way of holding these up because I left them a little bit longer before I pinched them. So I pinched off the tops, so hopefully the flowers grow down the way, but I need to support them somehow as well. Um, so I put some gypsophila around and then the lovely sweet peas in the middle. I need to water these. My lettuce, got some some sprouting, some, some sprouting some flowers. Look at my coriander, it has got beautiful flowers on it. Obviously it means it's past it, but how stunning are they? They're just gorgeous. Look at the beautiful flowers. I honestly didn't know that would happen. I usually end up using it before it gets to that stage, but I'm actually really liking how that looks. Um, so I need to water water these. This is coming on really well. What's this one? Oregano. It's coming on really good. Um, so I need to, you need to, um, we'll be harvesting a lot of this in the at the weekend anyway, but look how much it has grown. Got loads of it, but it's a bit wilted because it's so hot in here. So I'm going to open up the door and give this a water as well. And it will recover and um, it bounces back. Um, my spinach had gone to seed, so I have re-sown it, but it's awful dry. So I need to get that. There's only one little tiny bit of spinach there. So I need to water this because I've been neglecting it. So I need to get it watered. Um, and then hopefully the other seeds will come through. But I have totally neglected it. I, com I completely forgot I'd actually put it in. Um, so I hadn't been watering it. So I need to do that too. I ended up just opening the bag and filling boxes and... So I need to give it a complete clean, complete clear up. Um, underneath, I have got my asparagus. It'll be like three years, I think, before we actually get any asparagus from this. Um, so I need to freshen up the soil in there and give it a feed. Um, I have sown some wild garlic in here. Again, I need to water that as well. It's quite dry. Um, these, um, I potted... Oh, I need to clean that water. Um, I wanted to make sure that they were they got enough, enough water when... Um, we were away for the weekend <laughs> and I put them in this tub and they've actually grown a lot more pepper plants now I planted the children wanted to do an experiment to see if red pepper green pepper and yellow pepper were all the same so we took seeds from each problem was only two of them grew so we'll we'll figure out whether or not um, that is the case with their experiment whether you get that water that's yuck that's just over the weekend oh gads um, I've also got some white sweet peas in here um, I need to give them a water and I need to go over all the dead, dead leaves because I left them a bit late before potting them out. Um, but yes, all in all, quite successful. Some things haven't grown. I haven't been as dedicated in the greenhouse this year. Um, I don't know if it's because the children are older. Um, the previous years, Grace has been at home with me and we spent a lot of time in the greenhouse when Bartley was at school. So she'd be like in the morning in um, in her her preschool. And then in the afternoons, we would just potter in the greenhouse. So I got a lot more, 
I gave myself a lot more time because we were doing it together. She had her fairy garden and she used to just play while I did stuff. She would help me pot things. And I don't seem to afford myself the same time in the greenhouse. It's not because I think it's a waste of my time. I just think it's a job I can do with the children. So I leave it and then I ended up end up not doing it. So I need to spend a bit of time in here because I don't want this season to be a complete bust because I haven't spent enough time. Oh, I'm sitting on a log. Oh, get me stand up. Um, yes, I'm hoping that the, the paddling pool is out because it's supposed to be really nice this weekend. Um, we just left it. Oh, I'm going to have to move it because it's covering over the plants. So we're going to get the paddling pool out this weekend um, and get some stuff in for a barbecue. Another barbecue. We've had so many barbecues this year. But it's so nice take, making the most of cooking outside. It keeps your kitchen kind of clean as well. But it just is lovely being outside and spending as much time as we can in the garden. We need to get proper seats, though. We're realising that we're still using old ones that we've either inherited or um, have taken with us from our previous home before we were married. So, I mean, everything is so old. We need to think about planning the garden and figuring out where we want to put everything and start looking for proper furniture so that we can enjoy the garden a little bit more and not have to be brushing it down all the time and yeah so that's that's something that we have to look into before the summer and before everything sells out as well but that is the sun that is the sun um out again i need to open this door not only are the plants sweltering but i am too um i need to also tend to the beds as well our peas are doing well but not as well as last year i don't know if it's because i haven't been watering them enough as well so i need to spend more time dedicated to my gardening otherwise i'm not going to have the same produce as i had last year and i'll be disappointed in myself for not doing it so yeah today this afternoon i'm going to spend time in the garden and making sure that i these plants don't go to waste i just realized through that i just went and looked back at those videos and i've got like i've been rubbing my eyes i forget that i've put on mascara and then i'd rub my eyes i did the same when i was out for lunch although my bestie said that i, I didn't have panda eyes when i was sitting at the table but I, because I've got hay fever, I do touch my eyes a lot more and I'm getting into that season and because I don't usually wear mascara that often, although you usually see me with mascara on, um, I've been touching my eyes and then I get this, these panda eyes around when I've been touching them. Um, so apologies for my panda eyes in the last video. Although I don't know why I'm apologising because I never look 100% perfect on here and I don't think anyone who watches me will be expecting that anyway. But yeah, you just forget that you've got mascara on when you've got hay fever. The joys of living in the countryside in the summer. So many bugs on my windscreen. You'll notice from the last vlog, after about 10 minutes of driving, the windscreen is covered. So any of my little driving shots in my last vlog were full of bugs. Um, this is an easy way through. I can't reach the middle of my windscreen by reaching. So I've taken my comb mop out. I did the same with the greenhouse windows at the top and um, the ones on the roof because I couldn't reach them. So this has made everything so much easier and it's all lovely and clean. I can't really do it very well on handed, but you get the drift. <laughs> good afternoon. I was gonna say good morning, but it is actually five to one. Um, I have been out this morning already. I have been to Home Bargains, um, but I also went and picked up some new purchases. Um, I've been looking for a salter scale, like an old scale to have as a deck, like a decoration piece for the kitchen for ages. And I have been looking more antique ones and none of them have been perfect. This one is immaculate, and um, I'll take you over and show you it, but um, that's what I went to pick up this morning, along with this coffee grinder as well. I'll take you over and show it, but I have been busy prepping this morning, ready for making a massive batch of quiches for the freezer. Um, my brother-in-law, Sam, is a huge fan of my quiche Lorraine. I say my quiche Lorraine, it's mum's recipe that I have adapted to make it my own. Um, so I have been prepping all that this morning, um, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Um, I cheat in certain bits, and as Jamie Oliver says, there's no point in spending ages making, for example, your own pastry, if you can buy it as well as you can make it. So I think he uses like rolled out puff pastry. He buys it pre-made because it's so much work to make. So I buy the cases for my quiches. So I'll show you what I'm, how I make them, um, but it's such a lovely day. The sun's gone away now, and um, I put this shirt on, um, just because I was going to be in the shops and I just wanted to be a little bit more covered. Um, but um, the sun's disappeared now, but it's still so warm and so humid outside, um, which is great. So I need to go and water the plants in the greenhouse. Um, I'm just loving that space just now. Absolutely loving it. You'll have seen in the last vlog, if you didn't watch it, I'll tag it up here. But you'll have seen in the last vlog, we painted the outside and finally planted up our um, lovely olive trees into little terracotta um, 
pipes really, they're, they're, we're using them as pots, but they're essentially pipes that came when we excavated the burn. Um, we knew there was a burn underneath, um, but it was covered over. Um, and when we dug down, um, we didn't know what we we're gonna find. And we actually found a full tunnel of these terracotta pipes, which was taking the water through. But the reason that we dug out the burn, one, because I love a burn and I was so excited to think that we'd have a burn running through the, the property. Um, but the second reason was that it was, um, it was flooding and we didn't know why, but it's because the everything was getting blocked in the pipe. So we still have a bit of work to do. It's still, we're still not finished that yet, but it's been settling for the last two years. So the banks are all settled now and there's plants and things growing on them now. Um, but we need to address the road. When it gets to the road, there's only a small opening, um, an old style opening. We need to address that, but that is a job for another time. But we do need to address that at some point. Um, but yeah, let me show you my lovely purchases. I'm delighted with them, absolutely delighted with them. Let me take you over. So these are the scales. I might find ones that are more antique and I might decide to sell these and buy other ones. But for now, I am over the moon with this purchase. I mean, how beautiful are these? I was looking for ones that stacked on top of each other, but when I saw this came with a beautiful cast iron base plate, I just thought it looked so pretty. And look, this is my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world, <laughs> is to peel off you know, things on phones or TV screens or TVs. They haven't even pulled that off yet. They still have the protective layer. This one's not coming off as easily, but oh, how satisfying is that? Oh, I love it. So they still had the protective layer on it. That's how well it's been looked after. It's just been used as a decoration piece. It hasn't actually been used that often, um, but so it's immaculate. I mean, there's nothing on it. Absolutely immaculate. So I'm delighted with that purchase. And then I've got this as well from the same guy and it's a coffee grinder. Um, we're gonna try it out. Hopefully it works. Um, and I did a bit of research into coffee grinders and they say that a manual grinder is the best way to grind your coffee. Um, I don't know if that is completely true, um, but if it isn't, then this is just a, such a nice piece to have um, on the work surface as a decoration piece. How beautiful are these scales? They're just gonna look so nice. I'm gonna put them up above the, the fridge um, and just have them, so you call them dust collectors, but I call them beautiful pieces and they just all match so nicely. I just think it looks so beautiful. But I think the children are really gonna enjoy using this because they did guesstimation and weighing during lockdown as part of their schooling. Um, and that was great, digital scales, but I think this is gonna be really good so they can imagine, you know, so they can visualize the sizes and then weigh out how much each thing is or figure out how heavy something is by by using these, I think it's actually gonna be a really good fun thing to do. And they'll learn, even though, yeah, they'll they'll totally learn about weights without realizing that they are when they're having fun. So yeah, I'm delighted with it, I'm so chuffed. And I got them at such a reasonable price. The guy was so kind um, that they, I got them at such such a reasonable price. So I am over the moon with both of those new purchases. But yeah, a few, a few of you have been asking, what have you found? What have you been buying with your antique stuff? So that is, my most recent purchases, and you obviously saw the last ones um, in my um, in my last vlog when we went to Steptoe's Yard, you saw a few things in there. But it's so hot in this kitchen, I'm gonna tie my hair up and then go through what I do for making my oven on the background. It's warming up ready for this. I need to add a little bit of oil and mix in the um, crushed garlic. I haven't done crushed garlic with this before, um, but I had loads of garlic to use up, but there is a mix of everything in here. It's obviously not vegetarian, so I put some pepperami in, um, and I've actually added extra this time because every time everyone has my quiche with the roasted veg, they are all searching for the little nuggets of pepperami, and they love it. So in here, I've got some red onion, white onion, um, all the different colours of pepper, um, some broccoli and some courgette. I have got asparagus, but I'm keeping it for my Sunday roast. So I haven't put the asparagus in here, but I've just cut them up really finely. I've kept the broccoli in bigger chunks and um, cut up really finely and I've kept it quite deep. It's quite a, th a deep dish Thing to mix it. Yeah, so I've got a spoon. Um, yeah, I've kept it quite deep. See how deep that is? Um, and the reason I've done that is I don't want them to properly burn because it's going into a quiche. I want them to be roasted, but I want um, them to, so they'll get a little bit of flavour from it, but I don't want them to be too, too burnt. So this will, the moisture that'll come out of the courgettes and um, the other veg will keep it from being too burnt, if that makes sense. So they'll be roasted, but they won't be too 
um, won't be too much. Does that make any sense? You know what I mean? So I'm going to go drizzle a little bit of oil on this and maybe a little bit of salt um, and then uh, pop this into the oven and roast it for about 45 minutes. It might be a, need a bit less because they're smaller, um, but I just keep checking on it and keep stirring it and then um, take it out when it's ready and then it's ready to pop down. That's a big bit. I'll have to cut that a bit smaller. Um, and then I put the, this into my pre-prepared bases, which I'm about to go and unpack just now. I'll show you them um, and um, show you what I do to seal them. So they have been in for 20 minutes, then I stirred them, and then another 20 minutes. And I think that's probably enough. They've got a little bit of colour on them, give them a little bit of flavour, but they're not too too overcooked because they're also going to cook in the quiche as well so I'm going to go and take them out to rest so they cool down a little bit before I start prepping the quiche. These are the pastry cases that I buy. This is one thing that my brother-in-law Sam says tastes so delicious it's the one part I don't actually make. Um, I don't even know if he knows that but he will find that out when he watches this vlog. Um, so these are the ones I buy. Um, what I tend to do is I have ordered them before in my Tesco delivery and they have often arrived very bashed. So these are the one thing that I do go into store and pick up. Um, so they arrive like this, you've got to check some, you know, there are little cracks, but I have a little trick. Um, I say I, I'm saying I in all this, but it's actually my mum that's taught me how to do all this. Um, so uh, I give give her full credit for, for what I'm doing here, but um, you can seal it. So let me show you, I'll pop you on a tripod and I'll show you what I do. Um, there's six in the oven just now. Um, these are the ones that are gonna be roasted veg and the six in the oven are gonna be uh, quiche Lorraine. So let me show you what I actually suddenly realised when I said, oh, the quiche that are in the oven just now are the ones for the quiche Lorraine. I realised I hadn't prepped the filling. So um, in the past, my mum's often just popped this into the microwave just to soften them slightly um, so that they cook through. But what I do is I do them in a frying pan just because I like them to be a little bit more crispy. So I've done, I've chopped two large onions. Um, I, I don't necessarily have an exact amount because I just sort of judge it with what looks best in the quiche, which you'll see when I do it. Um, but I've just chopped them up quite finely and um, left a couple of big, big bits, but the rest are pretty fine. Um, and then I have pre-prepped um, my smoked bacon um, into little bits that I'm going to then fry off as well and that's ready for filling the quiches. Um, onions got a little bit overcooked because the post lady came to the door and we had a lovely chat and I was like oh no I've left the onion and the oven on. Um, so they have cooked and what I did with the previous ones they're out of the oven now as you can see they're on the draining board and on the cooker but I'll show you what I did. So obviously open up the packet very carefully and then in order to seal your base if you just beat up some plain eggs, just eggs on their own, all beaten. Um, I did three eggs and that did all six of those and I think it'll do some of these as well. I don't know if it'll do the whole lot. And you literally just pour it in your, in your flan case, like that. And then roll it around so it covers all the way to the edge. Can you see that there? All the way to the edge like that. Don't leave it sitting because it'll just make it soggy. And then once you've finished, I would normally have one of these open. <laughs> I would normally have them all open ready. Um, and then you just transfer it from that one into this one. It doesn't matter if it goes over a little bit, that'll just cook in the oven. Make sure you get off all the excess because you don't want to have fluffy eggs in the bottom. You just want enough to seal the, the inside. So you'll see that's completely coated. Oh, I'm dripping everywhere on all edges and it seals any cracks that are in the pastry. And then do the same with this one and go all the way around and then tip it into the other two then when you take it out of the oven put it in for seven minutes at 200 and it sort of cooks and that gives a complete seal on the base of your case so that way when you put in your liquid and leave it in for going in the oven obviously it'll take a while before that cooks so it prevents it from soaking through into your base and it prevents it from having a soggy base on your, your quiche base. Because otherwise, by the time it cooks, it'll have a ch had a chance to soak into your pastry base. But the good thing with this is that it's all sealed and ready, um, al already sealed. So it kind of gives it a waterproof casing um, for you then to put your own liquid and your own fillings in. And by the time they're cooked, it hasn't soaked through. Um, so you just do that. So that was three eggs, just cracked and beaten with a fork. And that has done all 10 flan cases with very little wastage. Look at that. That was well planned. I didn't even plan that. I didn't know. 
Um, I've also lost my recipe, so I've just texted mum asking for the recipe and what the quantities are, and she's just sent it through, but I can't remember what I edited it to, so I can't remember if I amended it to being totally different, so I'm just gonna have to wing it and hope that they turn out nicely. But we're having this for dinner tonight, so before I pass on um, the gifts I'm making for a couple of people, so before I pass them on as gifts, um, I will taste test it tonight and check that it tastes okay. But once that's done, they then go in the oven as well. Let me pop these in for seven minutes. One, two, three, four. And then set the timer for seven minutes. And then I think these will be cool enough to go on my table. No, so what I'll do is I'll get us a, a tea towel. And I will lay my tea towel out on here, just so it doesn't damage my worktop. Let's get rid of this waste, tidy up as I go along, so it's not such a big mission at the end. So, right, let's get the flans on here. So I'm going to do they're made, I then leave them to cool and then I pop them in the freezer and then you can just pop, take them out. I often do defrost them before I cook them, um, but um, yeah, I often do defrost them. Let me just wash my hands. Um, I often do defrost them before I cook them. However, you can put them straight in to cook just at a lower heat for a longer time. Um, and that way it gets cooked um, all the way through. Um, you've got to be careful that it's cooked in the centre. But everything you're adding, I mean, the bacon's all cooked. Everything's cooked. The eggs will be cooked. So when, once you freeze them, everything is cooked anyway. So that's me all prepped. Um, so I just use my hands. I've cleaned them. But obviously you can use a fork or a spoon if you would rather. But I just put in a good amount because there's nothing worse than, well, there is something worse than not having enough bacon in your quiche lane. But a good amount, not enough that I'm not going to have any room for my cheese and my onions, but a good amount that it's, maybe that's too much. Um, I can hear Sam shouting down the phone, no, keep adding more, keep adding more. So pop these in. Um, and I did promise that I would do this weeks ago and I'm only getting around to doing it now. So what better than to do it in the last vlog before the summer holidays? I am going to take some time off. Um, I might do some vlogs over the holidays, but it won't be as, as routine and regulated um, just because I'm going to have some time off with the children. Um, so uh, I will be on stories and I'll be on Instagram. So if you follow me over on Instagram at Pori Design, then I'll keep, on touch, uh, keep in touch as much as I can on there. So make sure you spread it out all the way to the edge because the pastry at the very edge, you want to make sure you've got a good mouthful of filling at the very edge because if not, you've got pastry, and not very much. And then the same with the onions. Now you could have done these together. If I'm doing just a small batch, then I just fry the onions and the, the bacon together. But I find that you don't get the same even distribution because obviously you're grabbing a bunch of both. So I like to do them separately. And then I just pop these in, they're still quite hot. So luckily I have got mummy's fingers. I prepare the cheese and the filling, and then I'll get back to you when I'm ready to do the next day. A little bit so you can't really see me, but you can see what I'm doing. So I do a mix of four different cheeses. Um, I have a Gruyere in the, in the fridge as well, but um, I'm gonna save it for Father's Day for croissants, parma ham and Gruyere cheese on top for Father's Day breakfast. So I'm using a mixture of mature cheddar, Parmigiano Reggiano, mozzarella, and Emmental. Emmental's got a lovely nutty flavour, so it's a really nice one to add to it. So I just literally, so what I do is I just spread a little bit of each cheese into the quiche. I don't put a lot of mozzarella because it makes it quite stringy, just a little bit. So, obviously we're not being healthy in this section. You can change it to low-fat cheese and you can also do this section with milk or single cream. But I am being bad at using double cream. If you're going to be bad, you may as well be very, very bad. So, the quantities are... Now, as I say, I can't remember if I amended this in my one, but I'm just going by what mum uses. It's a quarter pint of your liquid, whether it be single cream, milk or double cream. Um, or, your, or your alternative if you're lactose intolerant. Um, so it's a quarter pint per two large eggs. So I am gonna make up one pint. Eight large eggs. 
You can add seasoning if you if you wish. Because I'm having these with the children, there's a lot of salt in the cheeses already. So I won't add, oh, there's a big bit of cheese. Um, I won't add any extra salt to it, but um, you can do if, and also I think the bacon adds to the saltiness as well, but you can add some seasoning to your mix as well. A little bit more double cream because it's quite thick. So I'm just making it a little bit runnier by adding a little bit more double cream. So hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier to pour. Because I'm gonna pour some of this mixture in just now and then I will finish it off in the in the oven because trying to carry it completely full is just a nightmare. These will go into the oven for 25 minutes, 180. But just check on them because sometimes, depending on what filling you put in, these might take longer than the roasted veg ones. Um, but I just do exactly the same process using roasted veg as the filling and then add the cheeses and the egg exactly the same way. But you can do this with any filling. I have done some mushroom and spinach. Um, you can do any filling that you like. These are just my two standard ones that I have in the freezer. I'm just thinking, I think I normally, this seems really thick. I think I normally do half milk, half cream. And that's what the difference is for my recipe because I do half double cream and half milk. Oh well, they'll be extra creamy this time. I can't believe I can't find my recipe, but I bought loads of stuff as you saw in my one of my previous vlogs. Oh, that's my reminder for school. Um, I bought loads of stuff, as you will have seen in one of my previous vlogs, for doing up the pantry. So when I do up the pantry, I will find my recipe and it will not be in such a mess. So my phone ran out of memory. <laughs> so I'm, these have been in, they've been cooling, um, and we're about to go and have one for our dinner. You don't have to be too worried about the colouring on the top because you'll obviously be reheating them. Um, so you can judge however much you want to want to colour the top. I've still got the roasted veg ones to make, so I will make them as well. And then these will be ready for going into the freezer. Two of these have got your name on them, Sam. So don't worry, they won't be going anywhere other than to your house. And leftover roasted veg will be totally fine in some pesto pasta over the weekend. <laughs> I've seen those faces I've heard all the lies But you ain't gazing On someone in denial Cause you want dollar bills right now But you gotta work real hard I know you want it to be easy So let your guard packaged up I've put some cling from underneath and then the foil on top and then you just have to whip off the cling film before you pop it in the oven and then I always cook it with the tin foil on just so it doesn't over brown um, but you can remove the label and um, I've just put the date and what it is um, and then this one for Sam so these two these two won't get eaten by us so remember that they're for Sam um, and I'm away to go with all the eggshells and, and my tea bag um, to the compost bin just I have one portion of roasted veg I need to go and do a label for it um, but that would do perfectly for a portion of pasta. Um, but I'm going to pop it in the freezer just in case we don't end up eating it um, at the weekend, but it can come out and defrost really quickly um, or get put straight into the pan um, and defrosted as, you, as you're cooking your pasta. Perfect. Add a little bit, just add a little bit of your pasta water um, to it, just a slight, small little bit, um, and then your pesto sauce um, and your pasta. And that's your, that's your done. <music> seen I've set up for Father's Day. I've still got to put some balloons on um, but we have wrapped the presents for so Grandpa and Granda um, so they're all wrapped and we're taking them out for a lovely lunch at Brewdog in Ellen. So there's a nice play park there as well so the children can play while we have some food. Um, so that should be lovely um, but I'm also prepping for our evening when we come back 
um, we are going to do Sing Along, a scandal from Right Here Productions. It's who it's by. Um, and it's a fabulous local, local to the northeast of Scotland company. Do a lot of um, these sort of packs. Um, this is a children friendly one or a family friendly one. But you also get ones that are like murder mysteries and things that you can do with your friends. We're so glad that you've signed up to help us solve this most terrible crime. Someone has rigged the te local talent show. The winner, Caroline, didn't really win the competition. So within this booklet, you basically find out, you've got to work out who did it and you get pieces of evidence. Um, for example, it goes all the way through here. I won't show you too much because obviously it gives it away. But at the very end, let me just skip to the end. At the very end, you pop in. So there's links all the way through to watch videos. There's videos that you can watch as well. So it's not just on this piece of paper. You click on the links and you watch a video of maybe interviews or whatever for the actual um, investigation. So it's really, the children are going to absolutely love this because they love Cluedo, um, the Cluedo game, you know, the um, junior Cluedo. Absolutely love that. Try to figure out who's eating the cake. So they're going to love this as well. But you basically work out and you add the numbers to the end of this link. Um, and you've got to remember the dashes, it says. And that then gives you part two. So, oh, this is just going to be great fun. So head over, they do loads of different ones. Um, as I say, they also can be hired out for live events, but they also do, which is really cool, singograms, which sound strange, but um, you basically tell them information about the person and they create a song, like from a normal song. Like, so say you've got a song that they love, they then change the lyrics to be personalised to that person and they can do photos throughout it as well. What a special gift to give to someone for a big birthday. Um, just to make them feel so special and they can keep it forever and they can do little clips, little videos of everyone giving their messages and then put it all together. So fantastic service. Today is going to be a day of Friday tidy and getting organised for our weekend. Had great patience But something knocked you out You felt your limitations And filled your mind with doubt You want to stay weekend suffering for it now and kind of regretting seeing the sunrise on Sunday morning but we made such fantastic memories and I'm so glad you can hear my voice is gone from a weekend of chatting but I thoroughly enjoyed the whole weekend it was just so nice Brewdog was lovely and we did the, the um, sing-along um, challenge thing which was so good the children got really into it and were trying to figure out who it was just fantastic really well done as well really easy to follow um and then we had a, a breakfast obviously lovely breakfast that you saw with the croissants parma ham and gruyere cheese in the morning um before a roast at night um so yeah perfect weekend and feel very content but a way to go and do some work so i'm going to go change and get going painting the hose reel in the greenhouse paint it black I'm determined to get that done so that's another job ticked off the list um, and the sun is shining and it's just a lovely day. So um, I'm trying really hard with the children to praise every day and to treat every day as a blessing um, so that they don't have, they're going to find out that Mondays in general are not the best day. However, hopefully by showing them, you know, that I can say, oh, it's so exciting. You get to see your friends. You haven't seen your friends since uh, all weekend. How lovely to see them. You know, so try and encourage them that Mondays are not that bad and, um, I say that, but they're ready for their holidays. I think every child is, and I cannot wait to have them at home for seven weeks. I just cannot wait. I just, oh, so looking forward to having everyone under the same roof, Steve's still working from home. So it's just, oh, I'm just so excited to have them home um, and a whole seven weeks as well. I was disappointed when they got six weeks last year when I felt that we needed the extra time at home um, not doing homeschooling um, just for our relationship. I think it would have been better to have longer time not, stud not doing homeschooling, but at the same time, they love being back at school and um, I think they are ready for the seven weeks. And I'm pretty sure the majority of the teachers after such a difficult year will be delighted to have seven weeks holiday. Um, right, better go and change my clothes and get going with some jobs. 
does that look painted oh it just looks so much better i can't get in about to the green in there so i'm gonna have to figure out a way of doing that but it just looks so much nicer and it matches the greenhouse so much better oh so good and also mum and dad have been very hard at work they have been painting the outside guttering look how good it looks we've still got this one this part to do in the window but... so i still have the water butt to replace so i still got to do that but the olive trees are getting on really well. Got some little bit more growth as well. Um, so yeah, it's looking lovely. And I've taken some granite stones um, from our pile of our collection and stacked them along the edge of the wall just to make it look a bit more seamless. So we are getting there, completely getting there. And things are just looking a little bit fresher and a little bit more well kept, which is great. Just come to take the bit in and I thought I could show you where the burn that I'm talking about with the terracotta pots is. So I'm just walking through the forest area, the fairy forest over the other side of the burn, which I'll show you when I go down and try to find a good path. We need to actually put a path in, which would be really, really nice to do. We also need to pick some of these, take in some cow parsley, take in and put in my vase. Beautiful, I think I'll use it on my outdoor table as well. Right, I'm now down at the burn. Let me flip you around so you can see it. So I walked along a bit, I came down here um, and then I realised you were only going to see a tiny little bit, so I've walked along. Um, so this is the burn. We, obviously it was level, it was kind of a little bit of a dip, but we dug this out and underneath were the terracotta pots. And um, it's got the beautiful, if I can zoom in, it's got the beautiful old opening which goes under the road at the other side. Um, that doesn't seem so bad, doesn't seem to block there. But when you come along, look at the beautiful sunshine coming through. Let's see if I can get you just a difficult for you to see. The sun is just coming through the sunsets over here and it just creates the most spectacular light coming through the trees. I mean, how beautiful is that? Oh, it just creates, creates the most magical light. Birds are loving it too. Um, so the plants, so this is the fairy forest over here. They've each got trees. I need to revamp them because they've got a little bit worn over the years. But these are the fairy forest ones and the plan is to have wildflower here. And then we're gonna have the banks. We're gonna have a bridge over here. If anyone knows of St. Andrew's Golf Course in Scotland, they've got a little low bridge. Um, so we have got a pile of granite um, left over from different jobs that dad had done in, in the past. Um, and we are going to make a bridge over here. Plants have started to grow at the edge like I was talking about before but this side's pretty bare but at least it's quite compact now and um, there was obviously quite a lot um, falling in. We have to figure out a way of clearing the leaves because they are creating an issue so we're gonna have to figure something out or just dredge it every year um, after the leaves have fallen. Um, so this follows down through here it goes all the way down and um, try not to fall into the burn it goes all the way down to go under our road over here and that's where the issue is so we need to open that up and um, because if you can see it's just a small opening at the end there tiny little opening just there at the end so we need to increase that so that when it goes and um, when it does rain and get high and cause issues where the road starts to flood as well and the other side of the bank floods too so that is the plan but this is where all the terracotta pots came from and they're still sitting here <laughs> two years later and i still haven't done anything with them so i need to move them for a start and then i'm going to use a few maybe line up a few and put my raspberry plants in them um, and maybe use a few more in other areas of the garden sort of to carry on that theme that we just did. Maybe have a couple at the back of the sheds that you saw when I was walking down and um, maybe put a few in the back of there and have some nice plants. Um, but they're not all in perfect condition. We have got quite a few cracked ones um, that are not, you know, but not perfect as you can see, some cracked, cracked sections. There's thinner ones and thicker ones and they're not all perfect. Um, some broken bits as well, that one's completely broken. Um, but they've been here so long there's plants growing out of them so yeah we need to need to move that um, and this is just at the bottom of the slopey grass and they've got a little circular section going round um, going round there so 
yeah, so I just thought it'd be nice for you to be able to visualise it. Let me just get through this tree. Um, to be able to visualise where the burn was that I was talking about um, for the terracotta pots for our olive trees. But they're looking really good in front of the greenhouse um, and I'm delighted with the progress that we've made. Um, but I will leave this vlog here um, and wish you all a very happy summer. Um, and I will hopefully be on. And if not, I will see you over on Instagram. Um, but have a great summer, guys. And um, thank you so much for following along um, with Life with Lynn. And I hope you've enjoyed this year's worth of vlogs. Well, not really a year, as it's from August. I think I started. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and until the next time, love you lots. Bye. Bye.